I'd like to present uh, some case and also the story to the treatment of this, this type of giant carotid aneurysm. The flow diverter, Professor Lilly and Dr. Bai, Professor Bai present many cases with a very good solution examples, but sometimes with a complication. Uh, in our experience, in the big size of giant anemones, I put the coils, I place the coils inside the sac before the stem because you are um, less surface to, to thrombus and you are better uh, disposition of the, of the flow diverter inside the sac. The only, the only problem is the money. But in this case, in lateral view, you are many times the flow diverter no open well. And the, the, the technique of Many doctors is push and pull, push and pull. I think in my experience, this technique is not, is not, sometimes is not good. I prefer to, to deploy the stain quickly. And at the same time to move the gear wire. No push and pull, you deploy quickly. Before they deploy the stand, I put the coiling. This quantity of coiling, no, no, oh, many coils. And then you see the stand, lateral view. It's a good. You are the catheter distal part to prevent any incident. AP view, after deploying the, the flow diverter, every time I place a balloon to angioplastia in the, in the proximal part of the stem. But in this case, you are very careful because it's not open in this part, the stem. Look, and this is the origin of thrombus. This is the reason I need to place a second flow diverter or second stand to open well this part, the proximal part of the flow diverter. After second stand and you are totally good result. One example of a complication, the late complication is I present in another session, is Churge-Strauss syndrome by bilateral giant anevrins and delay complication. Churge-Strauss syndrome is a systemic vasculitic associated with eosinophils. It's treated by flow diverter, but also, at the beginning, is treated with a leostain in another center. This is the right carotid artery, and this is the left carotid artery. The right carotid artery is treated in June in 2010 with leostain. This is the right. After and this is the left. He come in, uh, in our hospital to treat the left side. And look, the, you are many stenosis, you are thrombus and stenosis. 
before and the Arne breeze and kinking and in distal pan. 3D reconstruction, axial view, and AP view. This is the right with the Leo stain treated in another certain, and this is the left when I place one piper line, but I have a problem to open the distal part. No, in, the, in this part, it's okay. This is the control after this stain. And this is the control few months later in the left carotid. You are a good result. In this time, six months later, I decided to treat it <coughs> the left sorry, the right carotid artery. This carotid have a Leo stain. This is lateral view. You have some turbulence in, inside the sac. Before to treat, I perform the angioplastia, angioplasty in this part. And also I place one stain. No, this is before angioplastia with balloon. This is before angioplastia and this is after angioplastia. still a small dilatation. In this moment, it's possible to navigate with a second catheter to deploy the stain. When I, this is lateral oblique projection, this is the flow diverter in the left side, this is the new flow diverter in the right carotid, I have a failure to open the pape line in this part. It's not open, never. I decide to turn the, with Terumo G, many torque, this part, and finally I open. This is stenotic. And this Terumo G, this open, and the stain is open. This is a control with the in the right side with the paper line. Also. I complete the treatment with angioplastia to have more flow. This is the final control in right side. This is the CT scanner. Reconstruction. One week later, the patient bled. But this, this bled is distance, no proximal to the anervis, you know, is in oval center. What is the origin of this blood? Anti-aggregation, not because the patient is treated by anti-aggregation two years before. Difficult procedure, manipulation possible, endoleak, or increase it in flow, irreproducible syndrome. Some paper from Japanese doctor present the same bleeding in patient with Schulhestrau syndrome and um, I think it's treated, recommend treating the patient with esteroid in this case. But now I'd like to present some, uh, some reflection of my experience. 
in giant carotidan debris, the 90 to 91, to th the, in 19 to 2001, I treated 95 patients. One group, the first group, 45 patients, 90 to 96, treated only with balloon, occlusion balloon test, and this patient, 96 to 37, occlusion balloon test and other technique. Totally, 82 patients is treated with occlusion balloon parent vessel, fibromedellin, one stain, one stain coil, one stain on it, total 95. This is the 90 to 2001. The complication, the 19 and 96, only with the balloon technique, I have one rupture of the siphon of anubris with exit, a three neurological deficit secondary to thrombus, migration thrombus in the side. 2000 and 2006, one stain delayed rupture one week later, after one stain and one rupture with onyx, the patient is very bad situation and, and dead. A two, day, two uh, neurologic deficit. This is example to test with a sacrifice with balloon test, the giant anevrins, AP view, lateral view, balloon. I prefer to place in this period, I prefer to place before, no trapping, only before. Because if you are the technique of trapping, you are sometimes you don't have the space to place a key in this part balloon. Only you put here, you are thrombus, you are thrombus. I complete no a second balloon. I complete the embolization with glue it, the carotid in this part. Another example is difficult to navigate to balloon. Hello, Lewis. We, like, Lewis may have fallen off. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Lewis. Okay, sorry. Uh, yes. Okay, this is the control in the right carotid and the vertebra. CT angle. Another example with the trigeminal artery. Persistent embryonary artery, the balloon placed here. This is a complex case in pediatric population. It's fusiform, giant anevris. The patient is treated before by two bypass, external and internal. AP view in the left carotid, this carotid by communicant artery also perform the vascularization to the right side because the left, the right carotid artery finishing only in the ophthalmic, don't have this portion. I decide to treat it with test balloon. In the left carotid. This is the right carotid, the finishing only in the ophthalmic artery and some anastomosis in lateral trunk. This is the right. 
after the sacrifice of the distal part of aneurysm, the patient developed 24 hours later hemiparesian dysphagia, and then recovery one year later, progressive recovery. This is a thrombus. This is a control five years later, but the patient developed a small anevris in basilar artery. Probably it's a vasculitis. And patient few years later, dead by bleeding because this aneurysm is ruptured. This is a case is ruptured with a stent, only with a stent. Treated before this aneurysm with coiling, but this second aneurysm, I place one balloon expandable stent. And this is the stem. This is the stem. One week later, the patient come to the hospital with massive bleeding, probably secondary to manipulation, to difficult to navigate to this stem. This is the, in this period of time. Other stem, a small flow, a small neck, sorry. High flow. I put the stand. After a stand, decrease the flow in sac. Some part of the stand, this part is still in one lenticular striated artery. This is after embolization. This is one month later. AP view, the stem now still compact because it's too short going here. After embolization, no deficit. One month later, it's open. Evolution, one month later, are totally occluded. This is the stem in this part, a totally occlusion, lucky. Also, I treated the 2000 and 2006, many cases with onyx, 28 cases of giant aneurysms. The technique is more complex. Some anatomic limitation. The saline test is critical and difficult, but is the excellent result long-term. Why I don't use any more this? Because the technique is complex. One example with onyx, in acute phase, this is the point of rupture, this is the onyx, and this is the cast of onyx without stem. Sometimes this patient is treated in another center with coils. This is the uh, regular aneurysm, remnant in the neck. in few months grow. And then I treat with onyx and the occlusion is stable. Complication of onyx, one rupture during embolization but unsealing and one migration, one migration, the onyx after Two months later, two months later. This is a, a case 
the migration is a very par particular anatomy of this patient. Look the middle cerebral artery and anterior cerebral artery have uh, intracavernous dysplastic aneurysms. I decide to treat it with onyx and it stopped here. After embolization, this is the situation. Some onyx still in, in the wall, but two months later, the patient come to the control, the aneurysm growth, and the onyx, some part of the onyx migrate. In this situation, I decide to place one stain before remove with a, a basket, remove some part of onyx in the middle cell artery and also place one, one stain, carotid stain to replace the cast of onyx. This is the control and this is the cast. This is a rupture on your breeze. And this is the onyx, very quickly. And some, another case of onyx, I think is not. When, when I use the onyx, I, it's important to put some cast of onyx around the, the carotid. Sometimes you are stenosis, previous stenosis in the in the aneurysm. No, in the sac, also when the artery going to the in the foramen carotid. The sonix, the sonix. Okay, I like to present some case and some difficult. Thank you for your attention. Okay, Lewis. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we have any comments or questions from the panel for Lewis? Or for Bai. Or for Dr. Bai, correct? Yeah, uh, from your lecture and dear Lewis, from your lecture, I get two kisses. Uh, very impressive. One is intracranial aneurysm. You treat it with a balloon mounted stent. I don't know whether it's a, whether it's a, a covered stent or bare stent. Why you use a balloon mounted? As as, as we know, it's it's a very hard to use a balloon mounted stent to get a good vessel wall abrasion. So because this, this one case. The other, the other one is I don't think the giant intracranial aneurysm treated with onyx can benefit neither uh, mass effect or endocellularization. Mm. <laughs> That's my yeah. Yes, no, no, but the the present the this, the the case I present is the old case. Is, okay. This is the old case. I, I, I like to present what is the situation in in in, in the past 20 years. No, at the moment it's different. So but the the I I don't know understand why the, the, the onyx is total excluded in the treatment. I think it's only it's only the political industry topic is not uh, medical because I treated some one or two case with a flow diverter and onyx and it's good it's good you jail in and you 
it's possible no use the, 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 the onyx, no use the coil, use the onyx. And wow. it's, it's better, it's better. Because when the, with the technical, uh, the technical uh, use, the onyx use the balloon, uh, normal use the balloon, but if you, if you have inside one stem or probably better, is better the ceiling to the anubis. It's, yes. better. it's not easy. But now it's not, I don't have more, I don't have any more Onyx 5000. But in my opinion, it's possible, it's possible to use the Onyx 18, but it's not legal. <laughs> this is a, this is a critical point. I am, in, I am in Europe, maybe Pedro in, in South America or another doctor, Anil Karapulkar in India. It's possible, you, you are possibility to treat the flow diverted with onyx. In Europe, it's, it's not possible. I think Pedro has a comment, uh, Lewis. Mm -hmm. uh, unmute yourself, Pedro. You're muted, Pedro. He's missing. Okay, may I comment? Sure, go may ahead. I comment? Sure. Okay, so I have seen everything to treat giant aneurysms. I began before migraine surgery. We were occluding the carotid artery in the neck with Crutchfield or Selden. Uh, screws, and uh, actually the late outcome of these patients was rather good. We have made, published also long-term follow-up, so you would think that the occlusion, proximal occlusion is very dangerous, but it, it proved that those who, who survived, they did very well with their three other arteries. One special case was in the 1970. Four, I occluded carotid artery in a young uh, stevardis with giant carotid aneurysm, and uh, she died in front of my eyes. So quite suddenly when I closed the screw and they opened. So she died in few few moments in front of me. It was extremely impressive. Then came microsurgery, direct clipping, and bypasses came and then came the coiling and stands. You have tried everything and uh, the complication might be less, but still remain, still remain. So if this uh, different methods have been tried, I still think uh, that proximal occlusion is uh, very safe and the cheapest method because what is what happens now, those who have a lot of money, they can get stands and coils but uh, those who are poor, they have, must have other kind of treatments in the whole world. This is how the situation is. So it is uh, unfair, but uh, this is the reality. So those uh, stands and uh, several stands and coils inside the giant tunnels, they are the price of a house. Mm -hmm. So this is difficult for many people and you cannot manage. And it's all what we are speaking in the with the stenting and calls this is first first world therapy so not accessible for all the patients so we have to think also for more cheaper solutions so bypass proximal occlusion might be very good uh, solution for to treat this uh, difficult cases so this was what i'm thinking when listening to this lectures on my experience. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank Pedro. You. I think Pedro. Pedro had a comment. Go ahead, Pedro. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I really enjoy guys, uh, your talks. And I, I think uh, we must, we always are learning. Uh, Luis tried to summarize the history a little bit with, with his presentation. Uh, I think as, as Professor uh, Hermes May, uh, pointed out, I, I think the, the option of, of proximal occlusion is, 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 is good. I mean, we have practiced in that many years ago. 
uh, and I still sometimes uh, once in a while uh, we do that. Uh, things uh, are evolved, of course, the, the cost is something that we have to keep on, on, on mind in every single country, especially in Latin America and other countries. Uh, we, we keep that, uh, uh, but you know, also the, the cost, the radiation that we also give to the patient, there are so many variables that the, the, the timing, uh, I mean, one thing is try to, to put uh, several uh, coils and, and stands and, and, and have a length procedure for the patient and for also for the people, a lot of radiation. Another thing is just a, a short uh, a short procedure with, with uh, flow diverter or, or, or even, even the shorter with uh, or, or less complicated with bypass. So uh, we have to adapt and we everyone is living in different parts of the world and have different approaches. I, I would like to take advantage of that and ask Professor Bai about the, the, the Chinese flow diverter. You know, in, that, in this part of the world, we don't have the privilege to, to use it. So what are the main difference by, of, 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 in, the, in, in your daily choice? Why are you choosing a true bridge or you choosing pipeline in, in China? There is any advantage of choosing one or another one? Can you tell us? Because we don't have experience with the with, um, true bridge. This is one. Second, uh, one thing that we learned with Luis and many years in the field, uh, the anti platelet regime is something very important. I would like to know your, your regime in, in China. Are, are you using dual? Are you testing every single patient? Are you still using clopidogrel? So this is a couple of questions that I would like to, to ask you uh, by. Professor thanks for your question. One question is, um, yeah, just like uh, Professor Kondi's name said, uh, the, the flow diverter. <laughs> yes, uh, maybe due to culture issues, the most of uh, patients, um, they have extreme fear for open surgery even they are uh, in a poor financial situation, they can still accept the um, flow diverter. Um, Michael, Professor Michael. Lilik? We're on mute there. Yeah, Lilik? You're on Professor Lilik? Yeah, I'm being Shi from uh, Shanghai Fashion Hospital. Actually, I can ask your uh, uh, I can uh, answer your question about the two bridge. Uh, it's uh, cheaper than the pipeline in China in Chinese market. It's only maybe two thirds of the price of the uh, pipeline, and uh, uh, the Chinese. Uh, health uh, insurance can cover the more percentage. It's uh, covered around the. Uh, Seventy percent of the price of the tube bridge, and uh, for maybe uh, fifty percent uh, of the pipeline, so it's much cheaper for the patient to select the tube bridge. And uh, technically, uh, the tube bridge, I think, the the one ma uh, main ad advantage of the tube bridge deploy uh, deployment is uh, it can retrieve much easier than the pipeline. When you uh, deploy the uh, the first part of the uh, stent, yeah. So uh, it's quite easy to retrieve and deploy. And the tube bridge is only covered by insurance in Shanghai district. For other area, patients have to pay much of that. So uh, some physicians uh, say they are, they, they are tube bridge like a girl and uh, the pipeline, the works like a boy. <laughs> 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 so it, maybe tube bridge is much more flexible, I think. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, any, oh, go ahead, any closing comments or questions for the, the, the Yes, yes. The, the catheter to to deploy the, the, the tool rig is a special catheter with the, this stand, China stand, or is your standard catheter? What is the catheter, the super catheter to navigate to, to the tool bridge? Yeah, yeah, is it is specialized, is a, a specific homemade microcaster to deliver the stent. Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks everyone for participating and especially to Ben for translating into Chinese. Uh, did it go well, Ben, the, the translation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now the audience is uh, uh, almost 4,000, I think. Oh, that's excellent. And uh, yeah. we're achieving the desire of you how to reach the Chinese surgery community. Uh, and, and this is great. Okay, uh, Lewis, what do you have? Do you have anything planned for two weeks from now? Yes, yes, I think I discussed with you, ha, huh, of with uh, with Bean or Pedro, whatever you want. I like to discuss with also with the aneurysm in the middle cerebral artery. Okay. okay. Complex middle cerebral artery aneurysm. Oh, very okay. good. Okay, we'll get that together and we'll see you in two weeks. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.